Okay, this is uh, John Bowles, who's the coordinator of this Area 6 Retired Agriculture Teachers. Uh, we can call, they used to call them vocational agriculture, now it's agricultural science, but they're still, all of them, FFA advisors. And this is the people who are retired, who taught in that area. And uh, John Bowles is a coordinator of this uh, a retired ag teacher organization. I want to ask John how it got started and how long he's been doing this. Well, <clears throat> Ira Black started started it about uh, 18 or 19 years ago, and uh, I've only, this is my 10th year to be retired. Somehow or another, I got roped into being the coordinator, so to speak, and I think nobody else wants to do it, but. Uh, it's been an annual affair, you know, since he started it, and uh, I think it's good to get in here and visit and see guys that we used to work with and compete with at the stock shows and the leadership contests and what have you, and uh, uh, we just try to have a good time here and catch up on what's going on with the different groups. And, uh, I hope that, you know, everybody will continue to come and, and enjoy the, the fellowship and camaraderie that you know, we enjoyed while we were teaching. And when did Mr. Black start that, do you think? Do uh, you remember approximately what year that was? It would probably be around 88, uh, no, probably, probably in the 90s. I know this, I'm, I'm thinking this is probably the 19th or 20th year. And uh, you said in the, in the letter that Last year you had, what was it, 36? 36 were here last year. Uh, and that was a record. It, well, in my tenure. Yeah. You know, I, this is my 10th time to come to this. And, uh, this is, uh, that was the largest group I'd seen. Uh -huh. and, uh, okay, and then you taught where and for how long? I taught in Summer Springs for 30 years. And, uh, and what was the biggest satisfaction you had from that 30 years? Oh, what? I, I can't put my finger on one thing. I, th I enjoyed working with the kids. Um, uh, you get a lot of satisfaction seeing kids that uh, that you had taught, you know, that are doing, been fairly successful in their careers and doing well. And, uh, I, I think I'd reached the point where I knew it was time for me to go when I started getting some of the grandkids and some of the kids I'd first taught. <laughs> and I figured I'd been there long enough. But, uh, I think that's the main thing. Is, well, what caused you to do it in the first place? Why did you choose that as an occupation? Well, I grew up on a farm. I grew up in a little community called Coke, Texas, uh, between Winsboro and Yannis. And, uh, uh, didn't know much else other than cows and pigs and yeah. chickens and dealing with hay and stuff like that. So I thought agriculture was the thing I needed to major in. And I was in ag and FFA in high school. It seems like the natural thing to continue in that. So which which was your high school FFA chapter? Silver Springs. Ah, so you had Sterling Beckham, Billy well, Connor. Well, they all, re no, I went to high school in Quitman. Oh. Uh, I taught in Silver Springs. Yeah, uh, I meant when you were in FFA yourself. So in Quit, uh, yeah, was Vir that? Virgil Vickery was my Vickery teacher. was your teacher, I see. Um, so, um, what are you doing now? Do you do you do any farming or no, are you I'm just fully retired? <laughs> <laughs> this is probably one of the main things I do all year. Yeah. But, no, I take I I pick my grandchildren up at school in the afternoons and keep them until their parents get home. And just yard work and you know what general stuff needs to be done around the house. Uh, belong to retired teachers, go to their monthly meetings. Well, I'm sure that. These 36 or whatever number of teachers show up this time appreciate the time you spend. Well, it's it's a labor of love. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've known all these guys most most of my teaching career. And, uh, a great group of guys. Well, I appreciate being on the list. I didn't teach ag, but but FFA and agricultural science changed my life. Well, I, I like to thank it. It's it's been good for everybody that. I do too, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bones. Appreciate it so much.
Okay, let's talk to this man here who's just recently, last year I think, celebrated 50 years as teaching ag. Is that right? Tell us about tell us about yourself and where all you taught and for how long. Well, I taught in Minneola for 47 years. I was born and raised there. When I first started, I was in Pittsburgh for three years. It's been two places. Um, how did you manage the last 50 years doing that? Oh, I just had a good, good place to work. Everybody's got to do something. Yeah. And I think, didn't you run into a guy named Johnny Cates? That used to be my roommate in college. Johnny Cates and I worked together. When I started teaching, he was county agent of Camp County. And I moved to Minneola in July, and he moved to Quitman in September, I think. So for 25 years, he's the only county agent I ever worked with. So, yeah, he was a great guy. We had a good relationship. So this is your first or second year as a retired teacher here? Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, let's talk to Richard Lee for a minute. Uh, Richard Lee, uh, how long have you been retired as an ag teacher? How long have, have you been retired? A long time. I, I took early retirement. And when I got 30 years in, I wanted to farm a while. And where, where was that 30 years spent? Uh, the majority of it is South Hill. And then the last part of it I see. And uh, did you enjoy that 30 year period? Well, sure. I mean, and of course, you enjoyed it more after it's all over. <laughs> yeah. I was just talking about some of my ex students and former students. And I, I do believe they look older than me. They have less hair, and it's just as gray. They have just as many wrinkles as I do, so I enjoy that. So you've been a happy camper all that thirty, all that thirty years of teaching. Well, no, no, I wasn't. But we won't go into the past. I don't want. I don't want to think about the past. It's, it's a tendency. I think it's human nature to remember the good things. A positive attitude. A positive attitude. You have a positive attitude. Well, yeah. I volunteer now at the local food bank in Franklin County, Mount Bush. And I have a conversation with everybody that comes in. Now, where is that food bank located? In Mount, it's in Mount Park. Part of the church was at the church. The church is gone, and the building next to it is the food bank. Yeah. What church was it? It was called Hilltop. Hilltop Baptist Church. They've it, got so many Baptist churches. Yeah. I think uh, Baptist, <laughs> we probably have 13 Baptist churches in my, my little town. <laughs> Thank you, Richard Lee. I appreciate it. I want to ask uh, Giles Blaylock. Hey, we're looking at your hand right now instead of your face. Giles Blaylock uh, is a classmate of mine at Texas A&M. I know he graduated from there in 57, and he's been an ag teacher until he retired. When did you retire? <laughs> Didn't you enjoy those those years as an ag teacher? Oh yeah, I really did. I miss the kids. You raise? Are you a cattleman now? I lost them about three months ago, and I sold them out for any more. Do you still live in Harleton? 
want to correct one thing. I didn't graduate. Oh, well, you and I were down there at the same time. I see. Yeah. Well, you were there a long time. I mean, several years. I, we, we used to sometimes catch a ride together coming back to East Texas. I didn't realize you didn't graduate from it. Uh, well, that school you did graduate from now is a part of it. <laughs> Thank you, Giles Blaylock. You're a credit to your profession. Well, you know, good to see you. Okay. What, what is your name, sir? What is your name, sir? And where did, where did you teach? Where are you retired from? How long were you there? I graduated. Oh, did you? Ira Black taught there one time. Were you there when he was teaching? I was there when he left. Really? Uh, I had him for a year and a half. That must have been really uh, memorable. Talk about and he inspired you to do the same thing. Yes, he did. Lots of. And uh, where did you get your teacher trainer? Teacher trainer. Yeah. And how long have you, uh, did, how long did you say you taught, 30 years? 30 years. Yeah. So was that a happy time for you? Did you enjoy that? Most of the time, yes. Richard Lee saying hello. Yeah, it was a small school. Yeah. Good people. When you were at Cooper, was it, was, did, did you have a student friend named, did you know Jeff White? Jeff White? Yeah. Yeah. And then Flash with his brother. With his brother? Yeah. Mike. Yeah. Was Mike older or younger? Younger. Oh, he was nine. Okay. So Jeff was ahead of you? Uh, Jeff was ahead of you in high school? Yeah, a couple of years. Do you know if he's still living? No, I sure don't. His parents are gone, so, yeah. you know, and Mike had gone to somewhere around New York to the insurance agent, yeah. and so I just lost contact. Well, what, what did you think was the main thing about Ira Black that made him so outstanding? Me too. Me too. As a as an ag science teacher, or that was his passion. That's his heart was in it. He was he was mainly concerned with us kids. That's his main end. Was his wife, uh, Alaria, was she yeah. teaching there too? She was only a teacher. She, she quit after my first year in order to have a child. Uh, and then they left without a child. I'd say that was, I'm, I'm really impressed that you had uh, Ira Black as an ag, ag teacher. Thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah. Thank you so much.
Chicago are so funny that uh, you let us wake this morning, that uh, you allowed us to wake in a country uh, that you have blessed so much, that uh, when we woke this morning, uh, we woke to the freedoms that we have here, Lord, we thank you so much for the uh, blessings you bestow upon each one of us each day. We ask you to continue to be with those of our number that are ill, that uh, couldn't be with us today. Uh, we have lost uh, some from the last time we met last year. We ask you to be with those families and comfort them in the only way that you can. Lord, we're so thankful for the uh, lives that we were able to, to serve our young people as they grew. Uh, those uh, fond memories that we have of the things that we watched as they uh, uh, grew into young adults and the things that they do now. We ask you to continue to bless our profession. Bless those that uh, put in the time, put in the dedication uh, to make sure that our young folks uh, grow into uh, good citizens today. We thank you, to you that we ask you to watch, continue to watch over the organization that we represent and all the things that they do for, uh, for this country. We ask you to be with those that uh, make the decisions over our lives. We ask that you bless the, those that uh, govern us. We thank you for the ability that we have to have a say-so in that. Uh, that we have the opportunity to vote, put people in, in places that uh, make the decisions that affect our everyday lives. We ask you to continue to watch over us, watch over our families, bless us, bless this food that it nourishes our bodies, that it strengthens us, that we continue to work in your service and spread your word. And we thank you the most for your son, that you sent to this earth, uh, on that cross for each one of us, and died uh, for the opportunity uh, that we'll be forgiven of our sins, that we'll be getting a home for eternity. Christ, let me pray. Thank you. Amen. I look around, I see quite a few here today. I'm glad that y'all can all look up here and see me. I'm, I'm pretty happy to be here myself. Today. But I know you know some of y'all getting like me, you get kind of gray and get your hair gets a little thin. And our bellies are getting out a little bit further, but I do want you to know that uh, I'm real happy to see all of you here and talk enough of us to come and want to share in our camaraderie and, and uh, have a good time. We've lost a few. Uh, I just found out from Glenn a little while ago that the ship has passed on and uh, I don't normally find out those things. Uh, when I mail out the letters, usually I know something's happened if I get the letter back, but in, in her case I didn't. Uh, there are a few others. If, if anybody knows of anyone that uh, has passed on or is in serious shape, you'll get it and share it with the rest of us. I have a membership roster I'm going to pass around here in a minute. Well, it's not a membership roster. It's just a roster with everybody's name and address on it. And I want you to check your addresses. Put your phone number, uh, email address on there if you've got one. Check to be sure that I have and it's accurate. Uh, might be one or two of you. I know Albert told me he didn't, you know, he did I've not got him on my list. But, uh, if your address has changed, you know, make that correction for me so I can put it in my computer and we'll have it the next year. Uh, I'll start one out this way and one that way and oh, be sure I get them back. Uh, also, before we eat, I want to mention this. You know, we've got an election coming up in about a month. And that there's some pretty serious stuff going on in education in our state. I encourage all of you to get out and vote. Find out what these candidates are standing for and how, you know, if they're incumbent, find out how they voted on these education issues in the past. Tonight in Sulphur Springs, there's going to be the, the retired chapter, the retired teachers chapter for Hopkins and Branch County is going to have a little uh, forum at the City Hall on Conley Street. It's about a block off the square, pretty easy to find. But, uh, I understand, let me check my notes here so I don't tell you something false, but uh, gosh, I can't even say it without the glasses on. <laughs> you know, part of becoming mature. Anyway, it's going to be at the Sucker Spring City Hall. Ralph Hall said he couldn't come, but he would send a representative. And really, you know, I don't know if he's in your district or not. He's probably some 
somebody that I wouldn't recommend if you asked me because I wouldn't vote for him. Dan Flynn, who is our representative, is going to be there, or said he was. Kendall Scudder, who's running for Senate against Bob Hall, will be there. Uh, Mike Collier, who's running for Lieutenant Governor, is going to be there. Uh, Bill Brandon, who's running for representative, is going to be there. So you might, they're going to get up and talk for about six minutes each, tell you what they stand for and what, what they think is going on, what we might need to hear. Then there's going to be about a five-minute uh, question and answer period after each one of us talks. So if any of you are, are in this congressional district and, and you want to come by and uh, listen to these candidates talk tonight, it's going to start around 5.30. Uh, you're more than welcome to come and, and attend, and I certainly hope that you come and ask him some pretty uh, pertinent questions, particularly the way it uh, uh, affects education. But anyway, know that you are, you know, I was told to tell you about it, and uh, you are invited to attend if any of these guys you know, are in your congressional districts. But uh, I think one of the problems that we've had as educators and teachers is a failure to get out and vote, and we've let we've let some rascals get down there in Austin, and they're 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 trying to do away with our retirement program. They're trying to do away with our pensions, with our insurance. Uh, there there's several of these guys that are not friendly to us, and if we don't clean up that swamp. You know, we we may be in, facing some hard times here in the future, uh, particularly teachers that are still active. In the election before last, we had a state senator in our second, uh, second congressional district for the Senate. He was the chairman of the Finance Committee who was a friend of our of teachers, worked for us. He got beat by Bob Hall in the last election by 100 votes. District-wide, Rockwall, all the way back past Silver Springs, down to Tyler. Less than 19% of the teachers got out and voted. That's a shame that they don't think enough of their pensions and their retirement. You know, the money they had to operate on to get out and vote. So don't get me too stirred up here on this because I'm going to need to be able to eat here a little bit. But it's very important that we all um, get involved and take an active <coughs> part in this election coming up. Find out how these people, what they stand for, how they're going to vote. And, and you make that decision to vote accordingly. Uh, I see so much stuff on Facebook and on TV today, you know, like, let's all vote red. Let's all just pull that Republican lever vote just Republican or let's all vote, vote blue. That's not the way to do it, guys. Hey, we need to find out what these guys stand for. Both, both those the dead wood out. I said my thing. But, uh, Could I add to that? Yes, you what can. you just said, uh, I'm pretty strong in my party, but this time especially, I'm going to call the party lines on the ones that we ought to go to, but I need some help on how to vote because I can't go to these meetings. I'm involved in something else. And I'm talking about in Franklin County. And, and at the time our retired teachers meet, we're having a meeting at the food bank, and I have to be out there at the very same time. So I need, I need some help. So we'll help you, Richard. If you were, and I don't trust, I don't trust her. <laughs> but, but I will say, you may be right on the thing. Look right here. You're laughing at I think it's so critical what's going on in education today. And for teachers, active and retired, to be as lackadaisical as we are about this election, it's, it's a crime. We need to all take an active part, and we need to hold hold these people's hands to the fire and make, make them know that they've got to take care of us. You know, I started out teaching years ago, 
I would, don't worry about the low salaries and all that. You know, where you're going to have this great retirement, we're going to take care of you. you know, now they're trying to do away with TRS. They're trying to do away with our pensions and everything else. And it's just not, it's not good. You know, those people, most of those guys down there in Austin are financial guys, and they look at those trillions of dollars in our retirement fund, and they're thinking, man, what can I do with that if I get my hands on that money? There's there, there a lot of them down there that are not, they're not in our corner at all. Uh, we have a, a guest here with us today, uh, Randy Hart from, I want to say East Texas State University because that's what it was when I went to school over there, but I know it's Texas a and Commerce now. And uh, if he'd like to say a word or two about what's going on over there, I'll give him this opportunity to, you know, to speak for a little while. So, Randy, if you got something you want to say, you got the floor. Thank you, and, and John, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I know some of you don't know some of you, and, and uh, that's that's my fault on that. Uh, I do want to introduce Bailey Whitlock. Bailey works with our uh, foundation and alumni office, and so we travel a lot together, or started traveling a lot together, to get out and visit with people like yourself, with alumni. Uh, with people that have a, a passion for education. Um, just to give you a, a few updates, and there's a handful of full of you in here that I have visited with and has come on campus. And we had a few of our alumni come on campus and meet our president that we had last year, our provost, uh, Dr. Ray Keck. In August, he retired. And we recently got a new president, Dr. Mark Rudin. Um, and actually, he is the first president at East Texas State in five presidents or 40 years that is not liberal arts oriented. He's actually a, a scientist. He has worked with uh, health and physics. And, and his research was in radiation technology and how that affected long-term health people. Um, so his, his main goals are oriented for uh, economic development, for science, for research, and that's where Ag Sciences fits in. You know, we easily fit in, in with that. You know, some of you I may know from a few years back, um, I give you just a touch of history if you don't know it, but I actually came to East Texas State, so I can say I was part of East Texas State, uh, in 1979. That was that far back, wasn't it? Fall, <laughs> uh, fall of 1979, and uh, worked for a year and a half for Dr. Hughes, and um, had great experiences. Uh, Gary and I judged a few leadership contest together, did a few other things too. Uh, worked with uh, Lloyd on several things uh, then and now as well. So I really do want to say that I appreciate every one of you from, whether you're an East Texas State graduate or not, for all what you've done over the years, you spent a lifetime, you spent a, a passionate lifetime helping young people. And that's what we're in the business for. And I want you to know that we're still trying to carry that through. Uh, I spent about four or five years in East Texas State. Uh, did not have a doctor at that time. So I was told I had to leave. And so I left, went to community college in Oklahoma for 15 years. Uh, came back and went to Charlton for 16 years and just came back uh, here at a and Commerce, now starting my third year. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how the good Lord works in mysterious ways and puts you at the right place at the right time and so on. <coughs> and if you're not a believer in that, I can share several stories with you in that. Um, my history at East Texas State has enabled me to, uh, to be able to put some things in place at a and Commerce in agriculture that, that has helped our programs, that has helped our kids, that has helped, for those of you that are graduates from there, that has helped our alma mater. Um, one short story about Buck. 
one day I walked to his office and he said, uh, and I'm sure y'all, we could go on with this for 10 hours, but uh, Buck said, uh, David, I think you were in that class. He said, he said, Otis only has four in his class. We need one more. Go and roll in it. Well, I was a faculty member. I wasn't a student. I already had my master's degree, but I went and rolled in that class so Otis could make that class. So now that I took that class, I'm a former student too. <laughs> uh, it was a class I believe in defense dairy science, and I just graduated and already had room in nutrition, so it was the same stuff that Otis was teaching. And but still, it was a great class, and still enjoyed it. But uh, that's y'all know that's the way Buck operated. So uh, uh, I don't try to operate that way. I don't think I have that luxury to operate that way today. But uh, uh, anyway, let me tell you just a little bit of, about what's going on at the university. Uh, it was just published yesterday on Facebook, so that makes it all legal, doesn't it? <laughs> Official. Uh, but it actually came out in the East Texas newspaper, there is, as, uh, the school newspaper, uh, an article that uh, uh, about Dr. Rudin coming on campus, but at the same time him choosing to live in the Heritage House on campus to proceed with demolition with the old president's house that was built in the late 60s to allow the, now the College of Agriculture, instead of the department or school, the College of Agriculture to utilize all of that land to build a new multi-purpose educational center for agriculture. We have turned in a, talking about legislature, we have submitted a $55 million project to the state of Texas to fund and build a multi-purpose agricultural education and training center there at where the old president will be. Um, we have acquired 164 acres of land at Green, over by Greenville on Black Land Research Soil where now we're starting to build facilities there in three phases. We have the money for phase one, we're still working on the money for phase two and three. Um, but we're conducting collaborative research with AM College Station Research and Extension with AM Dallas. I'm calling it AM Dallas, it's the AgriLife Research and Extension Center there at Point Road uh, there in Dallas. Uh, there will be initiatives in the future to collaborate with AM AgriLife Extension for urban agriculture, sustainable agriculture in the Dallas area. There will be more. Uh, emphasis placed on what we can do here in rural East Texas as well and how we can serve you better. Uh, we have uh, another initiative with an alumni group that uh, as soon as they come up with the money that they have said that they are going to, they will build a uh, about 180 acre sustainable farm, sustainable agriculture farm on, on our university farm uh, plus they will add some acreage to that as a research farm uh, for sustainable agriculture. Uh, so these are just three initiatives that we've done. We just hired a new Ag Wildlife Factory member. We've hired a new Livestock Dungeon Team Coordinator and Coach. Uh, we've hired a new veterinarian. Uh, we have uh, in the process of hiring a new uh, person in Ag Communications. And so those are some of the Areas that, that uh, our faculty and I have identified since I've been there in the last two years that we need some help on uh, to help grow our programs. And in doing that, over the last four years, we've grown 86% of students. That's, that's significant. When I, we've grown from 281 to 520 students. We went from 436 last fall to 520 this year. Between 80 and 90 new students from last fall to this fall. Uh, We've grown 66% in faculty and 86% in students over the last four years. So our, we are the only college on campus that has grown both undergraduate students and graduate students. And we're very proud of that. But what it takes for us to continue in that trend and that momentum is people like yourselves still passing the good word by us. That we're doing some good things. I fully realize that not everything is like you wanted it over the last 30, 40 years during the time of a lot of the liberal arts presidents. And, but that's why, I, when I, my first day on the job, President Kent called me to his office, kind of like, going, like I went to Buck's office. And, and so I was kind of, 
I've been there before, so I said, okay. And uh, he said, I need you to tell me exactly what we need to do to fix agriculture here. And I need you to bring me people and tell me what we need to do to fix agriculture. Since then, we've had several people, such as some of you in this room, that has gone and met with Dr. K and told me what we need to do. And so we've worked on that for the last couple of years. We will continue to do that. Dr. Keck said, if there's something wrong, we need to fix it. Tell me what it takes to fix it. And I've never, ever had a university president ever tell me that in my 35 plus years of being in higher education. Um, many of you can remember many of your superintendents, and some of you may have been superintendents. But you didn't have many superintendents calling you in the office and saying, tell me what I need to do to fix this. Usually it was what am I going to guess to tell them what they want to hear? That's usually how a lot of administrators work. Well, that's not how Dr. Keck worked. And so far, that's not how Dr. Rudy has worked. And our provost, Dr. John Humphreys, that's not how he's worked. And so I truly appreciate an upper administration that has supported uh, the growth in agriculture that we've had over the last couple of years. Dr. Humphreys said, the, 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 what do you need first? And since many of you have been in, in this uh, arena, we've now had the direction of animal, the, from the Animal Welfare Act to initiate a research compliance office on our campus. And it's on every university campus that does research in the United States. That has put a lot more restrictions on what we can do and when we can do it and how we can do it. But we're working through it. But the first thing we had to do is spend about two hundred fifty thousand dollars to just fix buildings so we can still house animals. After we fixed that the first year, the second year now we spent over another another hundred fifty thousand dollars and we remodeled our swine facility. We'll be putting swine in there very soon. Uh, we were given five hundred thousand to refence the university farm to be able to take care of the boundary fences and make cross fences to rotate pastures and manage our forage and manage our livestock. So as you can see, if you start to add those things up, we've been given over a million dollars in the last two years by our administration. That wasn't done in the last 40 years. And that's already happened for us in the last two years. So I tell you all of that because I'm very transparent on what's going on. Uh, but all of you as, as alumni, some of you as alumni, all of you as uh, uh, retired teachers in East Texas that took teams to Commerce for several years that uh, uh, brought, we are here to serve Area 6 just like we served 40 years ago. And so that's why I'm here today and that's why I appreciate you inviting me here. Uh, I think uh, there's two or three initiatives that I do need to mention. And, uh, one is that we have started a Roger Arnold scholarship in Dallas. We are about halfway there. We're about halfway there on that scholarship in Dallas. We have one alumni that has said if we raise the other fourth, he will give the other fourth and make it fully in Dallas. And so what we're starting is a $10 a month and $20 a month club Ex Ag Excellence account that that money can go in for anything you want it to. It could also go into that Roger and Gene Arnold scholarship and down. So spread the word when you talk with people. If you're interested in doing that, we'd be happy to visit with you. Um, Roger, there's a lot of stories on Roger too. But I saw Roger at the restaurant yesterday, 92 or 3 years old. Still the same Roger. Um, just move a little slower like the rest of us. And Roger, Roger impacted a lot of people. And so that's one of the things that we can do to impact a lot of our students in the future. We also are hosting, uh, I know back Gary, when was it? A few years, just a couple years ago, wasn't it? When you and I judged a, a leadership contest together? A few years ago. A few years ago. <laughs> We, we no longer host the Area 5 and Area 6 when I came back two years ago, and I said, that's a shame. 
But what we do is we host an invitational leadership contest on November first of this year. And then one thing that we're adding this year is when we get those at the end of those area contests, they have about ten days to two weeks to go to the state. Yeah, good to you, and we're hosting a practice contest. And it's not necessarily a contest, it's more just a practice for the winners from the areas, from areas five and six. Invite them on campus to commerce, have them another night of practice between the area and state. I would love for any of you that would like to volunteer to come back and be a judge and give a critique. We're not going to rank them, we're not going to place them, they've already won their area. They've already been first or second in their area. They're going to state, but they would use some extra help in critiquing to go on to state and represent area five and six at a much better rate. And so if some of y'all would like to come back and, and uh, help us with those activities, be engaged with some of the things that we're doing on campus. Campus has changed since some of you've been there. And uh, it's changed because when I came back, the street right in front of the ad building was no longer there. It was all fixed up in pretty patios. And uh, so things have changed. But we're going to continue to move forward, and we're going to continue to change for the better. We have homecoming on October 27th. We're, not, we're no longer having the breakfast. We're having the lunch. We're having a barbecue lunch at 11.30. And if you want to get involved in that, come back for homecoming. We welcome you and invite you back for homecoming. Um, let's see if there's something I've forgotten. Uh, just like the kids today, I gotta look at my phone. It's on my phone. I think I pretty much covered it. Um, one thing that we are also doing now more and more than what we have done in the last several years is we're I hired an outreach coordinator, where they're going out instead of just. Waiting for students to come to us, we're going out to a lot of high schools. We're going to visiting and county livestock shows. And we're going to be doing more and more of that. I can give you all sorts of information. Glenn's already uh, agreed to help us out at the Mineola Career Fair. And I'll be getting with him to give him information so that we can, uh, so that he can uh, be there as a former teacher and faculty member there, well respected in that uh, school where he can visit with those teachers and kids as well. So if you want to go back and visit the, the high schools that you uh, worked in or some people in your community that you live in, then you're more than welcome to do it. You're not going to hurt our feelings one bit. And I can actually give you some information to help you do that. Uh, we're very proud uh, of the university in which we represent, in which we work. and. Uh, it's I've always tried to live by the motto that when we work, we work hard, when we play, we play hard. And uh, hopefully we're working harder and representing you in a place that you're going to be very proud of. Uh, any questions? I'll field any questions. We, uh, I do, I do have, as I mentioned, some new faculty, some things we haven't had at the University of Agriculture over the last few years, number of years. So we're starting, we have started and are starting. We started our livestock judging team, horse judging team, beef judging team. We're starting a show team. We're starting an academic quadrathlon team. And we're starting a stock horse team. And so those are just some activities and engagements to have our students come and, and be a part of us and be leaders on campus in those activities. I think those, I don't have to preach to the choir because you had kids do this with you for several years. And it's important that they come to us and get involved in some of the same things. So we, we appreciate you're welcome to come on campus. Our gates are always open for you. And uh, just give me a call, give me an email, and we'll be happy to visit with you and show you around if you want to come to campus. Anything else? Thank you, Randy. Thank you. That was less than a 50-minute lecture. <laughs>
the biggest part of the Everybody's in the picture. Everybody's in the picture except except Burke Bullock. <laughs> I think we're better off if you move on this end because, uh, well, I don't, you, hey, you could try standing there in the end there. Hey. Okay. I've got it by available light. I'm waiting for my flash to get completely charged to get one flash shot, okay? Okay. It's just taking this chart. Uh, I've got the picture in, in available light, but I'd like to get a flash shot. I don't know why it's taking so long to charge. You can never really be a battery. Thank God. Um, do you, uh, are you safe, Randy, are you safe standing in the chair? Sure. Okay. Uh, David, it's harder to get up there. Now, go ahead and make the picture. This is the way you make the picture. Just push that. When, when you push that halfway down, the little green light comes on. Uh -huh. And the green light means you're focused and ready okay. to go. Okay. Uh, but this, when this stops blinking, it's charged, and okay. it'll get a flash picture. 
and it hadn't stopped yet. So the, it's I don't, I don't, if it if it doesn't, we'll just skip the flash if it doesn't okay. charge pretty quick. But go ahead and make another one or two or two or three, maybe with just available light. And that's all you do is wait, press it halfway down. It's wait till the green light comes on. That means focus, and then all the way down, and you got it. Yeah. You want me to hold, hold your chair for you? <laughs> you may have to push the, uh, the can you, can you feel the zoom? You may have to extend it. It may be, can you see all of us in that screen? Okay, you're ready to go then. Everybody say Randy at the same time. Okay, well just make the available light picture. As soon as you see the green light, you're ready to go. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, everybody. All right. <laughs>